Hello, hello, good morning, girlfriends. It's that time of the day for our Girlfriends' is Guide to Homeschooling interview. All right, let's see if we can get started here. Get our guests. I hope you all are having a great day so far. A little bit of, um, maybe a little sleep deprived for some. <laughs> but I hear it. Good morning, Leona. If as you come in, girlfriends, good morning, yeah, yeah, yeah. Much grace to this mama this morning, who's in the middle of a move and doing an interview and living <laughs> and carrying a baby in her room. Oh my goodness, she got a lot going on. Hey, you, you okay. all come on in and let us know where you're uh, viewing us from. Yeah, yeah. I let you know when I've shared it onto Girlfriends' this Guide to Homeschooling. Okay, and then you can share it from there. Okay. Give me a quick awesome. moment. All righty. Okay, it is shared, Yaya. So okay. you are good to uh, go. All right, all right, all right. Let good morning, Patricia. Let us know where you're viewing us from. Good morning, everyone. Let me see. All righty. We're all set there. Okay. And let me go on airplane mode. And Okay. All right. We're set. Let me know when you're ready, uh, Yaya, and we'll get started. Okay. Awesome. I'm sharing right now. Okay. Very good. All righty. So I am ready when you are All ready. All right. Let me get my phone quiet over here. Because <laughs> I hear all the beeps over here. Well, I can share into my groups as well. I completely yeah. forgot about that. Yes, you can share into any groups and your pages and all that good stuff. Good morning, good morning, girlfriends and guy friends. Hey, hey. And How are you? Little this bit. Morning. It's going to be a great interview. Great, great, great interview. Yes, it is. Yeah, and if you have any questions for Yaya as we go through the interview, and if we have time, I'll be happy to ask them uh, for you you uh to her so um certainly do that as well put any questions and comments in there and i will definitely share them okay let me know when you're ready yaya i am ready all right I here we go three two one <laughs> girlfriends is guide to homeschooling i am turned up for today's interview Good morning. Woo! long time coming but uh we have got it set and we are ready to go good morning Ladonna. All right, so uh, if you are wondering who in the world we are here on this Facebook page, I want to let you know this is Girlfriends has Got to Homeschooling. I'm Angela Jordan Perry, and I'm the host of this show. This platform is to give voice to the African homeschooling diaspora and to the marginalized homeschoolers. So this is what this is all about. We share their successes, their triumphs, their, their why of homeschooling. Um, and this is not to say uh, to public school that is not the platform. This is to elevate and give voice to those who are homeschooling of the African homeschooling diaspora, okay? So let's see. Let me tell you about myself. I'm a homeschooling mom myself now of 18 years, uh, homeschooling eight children, graduated three, five more to go. Uh, we make our home in the northwest part of the state of South Carolina where we are self-sustaining farmers. Uh, married for 26 years, and I serve my community here in the state of South Carolina, um, giving families legal rights to homeschool in this state, okay? So, and then in part is here with Girlfriends has Got to Homeschooling. Uh, my purpose-driven life is to make a positive impact on thousands of homeschoolers worldwide. And so I do that in part serving my community in South Carolina, and then here with Girlfriends has Got to Homeschooling, and then a drum roll. Do -do 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 -do. We got another big thing coming out, and we're going to unroll that, outroll that, or however you say that in the coming weeks. So excited about that. And that, again, is to, to encourage and boost and uplift the African homeschooling diaspora. So you all get ready. That's going to be ah, mind-blowing. So anyway, that's enough about us. We are here with our guest, Yaya, and I'm going to tell Good you morning. a little bit about her. So... Yaya, are you ready to make this happen? 
I am, I am, I am. Yes, yes, good, 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 good. And you feel okay, you breathe in, you, you relax. Yes, yes, my husband made sure I had water and the fan going and light, so he's <laughs> very helpful. Good, good, good. Well, let me tell you a little bit about our guest girlfriends. So, Yazara, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, Yazara, Yazara, Yazara. Yazara, Adira Yazara. is a wife, homeschool mom dynamic speaker and innovative entrepreneur with a passion for helping women restore their femininity to create whole life success, powerful relationships, and lasting legacies. Yaya has created groundbreaking programs, including the Feminine Success School and the Success Circle Mentorship Program, which teach women 25 to 65 how to use feminine influence to flourish in personal and professional relationships. Uh, Yaya facilitates workshops to support positive gender relationships in corporate settings, uh, female student leaderships, marriage preparation and restoration, work-life integration for women and mothers, and relationship readiness for single women. Now, let me let you know, just on a personal note, I have no clue how I came across this beautiful one. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I don't really remember, but I saw a video of her and uh, doing a live, I guess maybe it was on Facebook. I'm not sure. And I was just like, whoa, just throwing it back about what everything that she was saying and the, what she was, her audience that she was sharing with. Number one, I was impressed with that. And then number two, to find out she was homeschooled, I was like, oh, oh my God, <laughs> I must contact her. And so this was months ago, I don't know, maybe the beginning of the year, and we talked by phone, and very graciously, she said, yes, I would love to do an interview with you. So here we are, and I just am always amazed how Yahweh connects us, connect people. Yes. Um, out of the blue, I found her. So this is beautiful. This, you're in for a treat. And so, Yaya, I have shared just a little bit about you with the girlfriends. Please tell us more about yourself how you got started with homeschooling and your why for homeschooling. Okay, awesome. So you shared all of the business side, which is great. Um, but before there was business, I was just a mama and a wife. And even before that, because I was married very young, um, I was married at 23. And before that, I was just a girl. Like I loved being a woman. And once I, and I somehow knew my purpose was to be a mother. And I was homeschooled, not for very long, but I was homeschooled. So I always had that consideration in the back of my mind for when I had children. Because this, the, it's not a, you know, bashing public school thing, but I just didn't feel like it was the best thing for my children. So once I got married, I really felt like I had stepped into my purpose. Like, if you've ever had that moment where you know that you know this is what you're supposed to be doing and what the way that you talk about what you do, you know that you know this is what you're supposed to be doing with your life. And when you step into that and being a wife and being a mother felt like that for me. But as I looked around and I saw how my sisters were operating in that space, especially my ambitious sisters who are like you know I want I have this career and I have this life and I want to build that and then motherhood and being a wife is a challenge because society kind of tells us that they don't live well together and I was making them live well together and I said if I could give this to my sister somehow I would do that and so that's how I started sharing what I do now and you know, I have three black boys, so <laughs> there is no option other than homeschooling for them, in my opinion, um, for them to be able to learn from their father and learn from me and watch contracts and deals. And we are also urban, we're, we're urban farmers. You guys are like farmer farmers, which is beautiful um, for them to be able to watch that and, and really live that in their everyday lives. I wouldn't send them, you know, to sit in a desk and <laughs> look at them all day for anything in the world so that's that's my why gotcha so tell us i mean break it down for moms who are in the position of being a mommy you know mm -hmm. and they have maybe corporate world maybe business on the side home business mm -hmm. what have you 
share with us, Yaya, how you've married those two things together. You feel pretty well. And, and then to be pregnant and then have a three-year-old and all the children that you have in the age group, how, how are you doing that? What does that look like in your day-to-day? -day? Okay. Um, so I feel like I'm doing well for where I am. I'm not even 30. So I feel like um, at my age, I'm doing well, but I know there's room for improvement. So there's that. I say um, if you are in the millennial age bracket to really give yourself grace in this time and say, you know, I'm not going to be able to make sure everything is perfect at all times, but how can I make sure that I'm learning early to be a good steward of all of these things that I've been given? Because if you've been given a, a great career that you love, if you've been given a beautiful family, if you've been given a great husband, be a good steward of those things but give yourself grace because it's a learning process. So that's the first thing I would say before I say, you know, oh, I have a great planner and all these different <laughs> things. Um, the first thing is to give yourself grace and then delegate, know how to delegate. I think, you know, one of the things that we as women of color specifically, we miss the mark on asking for help. And usually because we've been raised, you know, to feel like, you know, I should be able to do it all. I should be able to handle it all. My mama handled it all. They were good. Why am I complaining? Mm -hmm. But we have a totally different level of stress. Your mother handled it all, but she didn't have $75,000 in student loan debt. Okay. Your mom handled it all, but she wasn't running. She was the CEO of a corporation. Like give yourself grace, but also know how to ask for and receive help. Um, I was feeling really irritable this morning because I'm pregnant and it, you know I'm moving. All these things are in disarray or in transition around me, and I had to be able to communicate that with my husband and say, you know, we can you know make sure I have some water or something like that. And he's very attentive, but even if he wasn't, it's on me to make sure that I get the help and support that I need to make the the ship run smoothly. So I have to be willing to communicate that and then receive it when it comes. So that's my tip. <laughs> those are great. I mean, those are great. And my biggest thing is grace. Give yourself grace, grace, grace. Yes. And then self-care. Take a moment and mm -hmm. feel and um, do what you need to do to make it work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, regroup. And I'm sure being a pregnant mom and, and just being a mom in general, you have got it. You understand that. Self-care. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have a coach. My coach is amazing. And she has all the women in her program. She makes us commit to at least 90 minutes a week of completely turning off from family, children, husband, every work, everything and pouring into yourself. So on Wednesday, I have my spa day. But you know, I have to make sure in the beginning of the week that I'm doing what I need to do so that on Wednesday, I can really relax. Yeah. Um, have that day to myself. So it's it's a balance, I would say, between that self-care, that self-discipline, and that self-care that's like indulgent. Because sometimes we get, <laughs> we lean on the indulgent side and we're like, I'm so stressed out still because, you know, you're not on that discipline and making sure that you set things in order so that when it's time for you to relax, you have time to relax. Yeah. Like this past weekend, we had a mastermind um, and I wasn't able to go to the mastermind, but I was supposed to be flying to Baltimore this weekend. <laughs> so that would have been a whole nother thing, but they live streamed it for me. However, my coach is in the spa today. So while I know our calls are usually on Mondays she's like look I have to reschedule today because I'm not going to be out of the spot until such and such time and that is an example for me so I would say to get around women when you feel that mom guilt get around women who aren't feeling that get around women who are creating success and loving their families and taking care of their families but also pouring into themselves first so that you don't have people around you who make you feel bad for you know taking care of you and that really will help <laughs> yeah yes yes i know to clap yes 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 yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely 100 100 on that so tell us um as you got started how long tell us about your ages of your your boys and how long you've been homeschooling yaya 
So I have an eight-year-old, a five-year-old who will be six in June, and I have a three-year-old just turned three two weeks ago. Um, and they have all been homeschooled their whole lives. Um, we st I started basically with my eight-year-old's one. <laughs> and I'm somewhere between homeschooling and unschooling. So I'm very structured and like, you need to know the basics. Like you need to know the things you need to know math, like the back of your hand, you need to read, you need to read their reading right now, as a matter of fact, um, science. And then I let them go, you know, what, what are you most interested in? So my five-year-old, wants to be a chef he absolutely loves to cook so he spends a lot of his time in the kitchen he spends a lot of his time on food things um my eight-year-old however wants to be an engineer right now he's very hands-on he loves to build he loves to create um he loves to make little machines and robots and things like that so i he leans more toward the stem side of things um and my three-year-old He's three. <laughs> right now, he likes to fight his brother. That's, that's what he likes to do. Okay. So, so um, that is how we kind of educate them. And I love it. I really, really love seeing smart little boys who have that freedom to just be little boys. There's not, they're not stressed out. That you know, they get stressed out over kids stuff, but right. they're not stressed out. They're not, you know, afraid and wondering. We we really detach from the media a lot, so they don't see, you know, all the things that are going on in the world right now. And we teach them to respect, you know, authority figures and things like that, so that they're not experiencing that. So we kind of almost keep them in a bubble but not in a bubble to where they're um they're so sheltered they're not sociable this is because they're very sociable yes i very understand that i understand listen so many questions i have for you so let's jump onto the bandwagon i want you to clarify i mean i understand what you said when you said it's very important to me to have my boys my black boys that i'm homeschooling that i do that can you unpack mm -hmm. just real short, I mean, your heartfelt, you, you know, conviction around that while you do that for your black boys, um, just so mm -hmm. our viewers can understand that it might be something that they, oh, I hadn't thought about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we teach them where they come from and their history um, and who they are. So it's very important for them to remain who they are to us. It's very important for them to you know, not identify with a marginalized view of themselves. Um, that's not something that we uphold. We really believe that we come from royalty and we have the power and the right to reclaim that. We have the power and the right to reclaim our brilliance and our genius. And that is often, my husband went to an all boys school here in New Orleans. That's very prestigious and very, it's, known nationwide for being an all black boys school and even in that environment he did not feel that who he is as who he was as a black boy was allowed to flourish hmm. um you know asking questions was a problem asking a certain kind of question was a problem you're not taught your history and and you know in its fullness um so we really wanted to make sure that they are mindful as they grow into men who they are because then they'll know who their women are they'll know who their children are and there's this perpetuating self-love that continues to happen throughout the generations there so that's that's what that means to me gotcha gotcha now you told me that you started homeschooling basically when your oldest who's now eight when he was one so mm -hmm. i understand that you're always teaching and learning when you mm -hmm. um, officially you know i guess officially put the title on we are officially homeschooling what was your um, beginning years uh, like yaya oh goodness <laughs> um it was it was definitely rough because i think that you know, at that time, the Your Baby Can Read system was really, really popular. And, like, everyone had these little baby geniuses all over the Internet. And I, and I was I had I was young. So 
So I was about 22 and I had these unrealistic expectations of what every child should be able to do. So I'm like, and he's not interested in your baby can read at all at that time. <laughs> My grandfather bought the whole set for him and like, he just wasn't into it. He wasn't feeling it. He didn't like to sit down and watch TV, which is great because they don't do that now. But it was tough. It was tough because it was a mental shift for me. And then I was always the top of my class. I was always like this avid learner, reader. And my oldest is not like that. He's very hands-on. He's very math and science, whereas I was more literature and reading. So my husband actually is the more, he learns like my son, like my oldest. So he, they work very well together. So I was very blessed to be able to have a really patient man who understands different learning styles. Because even me, me and my husband, we learn totally different. <laughs> like we are like night and day. Um, but then my second son came and we learn a lot alike. And so I was able to connect with him more on that level. And my my oldest was like two and a half at that time. So we hadn't really gotten into the swing okay. of full-time homeschooling. Okay. So that's how that went. Um, I still feel like I'm in the beginning years of homeschooling. I mean, you have graduated three and homeschool eight, like you on it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this is just the beginning. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And every year, I mean, all that I've been homeschooling for 18 years, every year is different. It's like starting all over new. It's new life, wow. new adjustments, new, I want to do something different, you know, so mm -hmm. it, it evolves. It continually mm -hmm. evolves as you grow. Okay. Evolves. So, yeah. So take us to, uh, you know, with that in mind, although it's been a short time for you, take us to your worst day of homeschooling, the day that you almost thought if you I'm done. I don't, I don't know if I can do this. Um, and, and maybe you even thought about quitting, but you didn't. And that's why, you know, you're in the thick of it, homeschooling your beautiful black boys that you are now. I th you know what? I think this goes back to grace because I can't think of ever feeling like I wanted to quit. I'll quit for the day and I'll be okay with that. And I'll, you know, because there's there's really no other option. So that's like in my mind. That's like me feeling like I'm going to quit on my marriage. I'm going to quit for the day. I'm going to go get a hotel or go to the spa or something like that. But I mean, it is what it is. We in it now. <laughs> but um, that kind of goes back to Grace and saying, you know what? Well, today is not our day. <laughs> so we going we gonna to pick this thing back up tomorrow. Um, and at one point, I didn't get to the point of quitting, but I realized that I really needed support. I really needed help for homeschooling because I was, my business had started to really flourish and I felt like they weren't getting everything that they needed. And so I sent them to a homeschool co-op at that time. And so that was like, I felt bad within myself because I was like, man, I should have it together. I should have it in order, but I need to take this time while they're there for a year because they would go monday tuesday wednesday so it was like a part-time thing but it gave me time to organize and structure my life and my business so that these are the hours that i work these are the hours that i homeschool and so that's that felt bad because it was such a it was like i should be able to do this and you always feel like I should be able to do it myself, like I was saying in the beginning. But I had to let go of the reins and let the let the village do what they do. So there was that. I love all that terminology right there. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Yes. And, and you sound like probably personality personality like I have. I'm I'm very much a red personality, and I can't quit on myself. I can't even mm -hmm. formulate the words. I can't. Right. It's not. <laughs> This is driving me crazy. And the fact that I may even think that this is driving right. me crazy drives me crazy because I'm like, I can do this. Oh, right. I can do this. <laughs> and, uh, but what you said is so poignant, uh, yeah, yeah, is that you got to lean on the village and it may be mm -hmm. a seasonal thing. It may just mm -hmm. be temporary until you can get it all in order. Like you, yeah. you can to make it work, 
You just got to yeah. take that time to do it. Give yourself grace and just mm -hmm. uh, get back in there and not let yourself yeah. talk, you know, yes. feed you anything yes. else. So with that in mind, I do want to jump into what is your self-talk that has kept you in it while you're pregnant, while your business is growing, while you have these three boys. And I know some boys can be just full of life and just full of energy and keep you going. Um, what's your self-talk, Yaya? Um, hmm. What is my self-talk? I know people usually have affirmations and then I'm a coach. People always are like, you know, give me some affirmations. I'm, I really don't do affirmations. I, re I Gratitude is my self-talk. Gratitude. And it's it's not even self-talk. It's talking to God. Um, I talk, I give thanks all day long. When I want to, I, I came up, that, that can be an affirmation. When I was pregnant with my first son, I came up with a, uh, a, a quote. I said, instead of complaint, give thanks. Instead, for, for every complaint, give thanks. For every complaint, give thanks. And I would say that over and over and over. And gratitude is really my self-talk, keeping myself focused on the vision, the bigger vision. Like where you guys are right now is our bigger vision. We really want to, you know, have, lots of farmland um our dream home is on 180 acres so <laughs> we like and and to be able to support our community and do those things that create generational wealth generational sustainability not just for ourselves but for everyone for for those who want it um and legacy and staying focused on that vision i don't have time to be beating myself up. You really have to think about mm -hmm. how much time that's taken away from your vision and your purpose, um, how much time that's taken away from the work, the assignment that you were sent here to do. I, I don't have time to sit there. You know, even if I feel depressed, even if I feel anxious, even whatever I feel, those feelings are temporary. And this assignment is this kingdom work. Like you gotta get on your job. And so, for every complaint, give thanks. When I feel like complaining, I'll say thank you. When my children run around the house, like literally, you got to dig deep sometimes. <laughs> you have to be, you know, I will tell myself, your children could be in wheelchairs. Like your children could not have the ability to walk or run or anything else. So you be grateful that that is not the, the cross you have to carry. Be grateful that telling them to clean up after themselves is the cross that you have to carry right now. So really turning those complaints into gratitude um, and, and talking to God. Don't lean on your own strength. Like <laughs> he didn't make you strong enough to handle everything he gonna send. But that's so that you can lean, you know, and, and be okay with that. Be okay with leaning on the strength of the most high that's beautiful that's beautiful so likewise uh contrast to your worst day take us to your most proudest moment of homeschooling i mean the day we just thought you know this this right here is why i do what i what what i do this is all worth it take us to that day yaya i'm gonna be politically correct okay, okay. <laughs> When we are in stores and an adult who thinks that they know better says something, one, a lady said something to one of my children one time, she was identifying an animal and they were very young. They were three and five at the time, I think, um, or even younger, two and four, I think. And uh, she was identifying an animal and it was wrong. And my son was like, no, that's a giraffe. And she said, oh, no, that's that's a zebra. And she was serious as a heart attack. And then she had to look again and was like, oh, it is. Whenever, and it's it's never girlfriends. So that just, <laughs> that really, that's really what tops it off for me is, you know, when people expect for your boys, black boys, to be, you know, one way they expect for them to not be well behaved. We've taken our children to radio interviews, to photo shoots, to conferences. We were just at a small farmers conference um, at Southern just a few weeks ago. And everyone there was like, your children, they were the only children there. They were like, they are so well behaved. Mm -hmm. And of course they were being kids, 
but they were just, you know, sociable and pleasant and mannerable and smart and well-spoken. And it just, it makes you feel like it's all worth it. Mm -hmm. um, especially when the kids that I see on a daily basis are in their tablets, like not speaking to anybody with these attitudes. And I'm like, what? What is going on? Not my children, but children out in the world who are social. <laughs> They're very anti-social. And so to have children who can um, not hold court with grown-ups, but who can carry on conversations and, and know, you know, at least a little bit of what they're talking about is, is beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Girlfriends, God bless. <laughs> I'll let you know. We are here with Yaya Smith this morning out of New Orleans, Louisiana. Did you just move again in New Orleans? You're still there? Yeah. Yes, we are right outside of New Orleans. We're like <laughs> five minutes outside okay. of the city. And I got what I asked for. And that's another side effect of giving thanks, y'all. You create that relationship with God where you can say what you want and it'll show up for you. I said I wanted to be close enough to the city to be easily accessible but ducked off somewhere. And that's exactly where I am. Oh, so right. Congratulations, <laughs> too. So this mama, she yeah. they just moved into their new home. Yeah. She has taught, stopped for just this moment to have this interview with us. A pregnant mm -hmm. mom of three boys now coming soon as her new baby, baby girl, first <laughs> girl into the family. Homeschooling yeah. moms uh, now for, I guess, about four, officially four or, or five <laughs> years or something like that. And um, she's making it happen while she's running her business, baby on the hip, husband support, and um, she's making it happen, you all. And so if you're just, again, wondering who we are, this is Girlfriends Has Got to Homeschooling. Go head over to Girlfriends Has Got to Homeschooling where we're done and follow and like that page. We have interviews three times a week, and every time we go live with a, an amazing um, homeschooling mom like Yaya, you can get those notifications and join in for encouragement, insights, realness, transparency, um, you know, all those true nuggets that we need along this journey of homeschooling and then see someone else who looks like you who is doing it and in the thick of it and succeeded. Yaya said there's no option for quitting. There's no option <laughs> right. for quitting. She's going to do it. So that means she's going to figure this same thing out and get it done. Yeah. It's going to happen. <laughs> So um, anyway, so yeah, yeah, we're going to move to the part of the show where these are questions to pick your brain. You can give short answers, except for the first one you have to think a little bit about. Um, and you have already okay. shared already just a bit, but just a few sentences to answer and that'd be great. Okay. So uh, I, my first question is always, what is your favorite quote? And you kind of told us, maybe you have another thought now, but what is your favorite quote that helps you through this homeschooling journey? Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you have one other than what you shared? Um, I take it a day at a time. Take it a day at a time. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. That's that's I share that everywhere with my clients and everyone else because we tend to get overwhelmed very quickly. One bite at a time. Absolutely. <laughs> do you plan to homeschool all the way through to the end? Yes. Okay. Um, what is something that's unique to the Smith homeschooling? Uh, your homeschool school that, you know, makes you all who you are, that you're really proud. This is what we do. Maybe it's unique to anyone else or something. Um, hmm. I'm not sure if it's unique to just us, but we definitely incorporate a lot of uh, agriculture. We definitely, New Orleans itself is, is unique. Um, so being able to travel around the city and teach the children in this environment is very, very different and cultural experience. Beautiful. Um, what is a, a favorite curriculum or a book that you currently have in your library that you feel like every homeschooling family should have this in their home if they're going to homeschool? A Bible. A Bible. <laughs> I'm just being real. Yeah. Um, yes. A, a Bible. <laughs> Uh, what is the best piece of advice uh, you've received along your homeschooling journey? Um, to give yourself grace, to give yourself grace, take it one day at a time. And to know, you know, that 
each child <laughs> learns differently. Yeah. Each child learns differently. And one piece of advice that I give to everybody that asks about homeschooling, because the first thing they always say is, how do you have patience for that? <laughs> I wish I had the patience. They always mention patience. Look, ain't none of us that patient. <laughs> none of us are that patient to deal with your children all day every day trust me we ain't all that patient but your patience evolves you have to just be committed to becoming more patient and know that some days you're going to be more patient than the next <laughs> that's true very true um what is your favorite maybe app or online resource or uh or cd or something that you used incorporating your homeschooling journey um for my little bitty one i just found out about this free site called abc yeah abc ya um that he really likes and all three of them really enjoy it but it's free a eh? and they can play with it in the car um their dad took their tablet for a year so i'm having to be a little more hands-on homeschooling right now <laughs> So there's that. Um, they don't use many apps right now. Um, Education.com, look, on those days when you are like, like today, um, when I have not had the time to plan out my week and the, all those things happen for children, my children's age, being able to go on there and have, I think I paid like $60 for the year for unlimited downloads, unlimited printables, um, and there are a ton for each uh, age level. Mm -hmm. So that's very, very helpful and valuable. Um, and I would say <laughs> get an eco tank printer if you're gonna be printing a lot. <laughs> and what did you say that site was education.com? Yeah, education.com. There are worksheets okay. and games and lesson plans and all types of things, so. Okay, very good. All right, well, y'all, y'all, here we are on our last question, the million okay. dollar question. Are you ready? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. Although you've been homeschooling a short time, but if you had to start all over again to day one, mm -hmm. but you have your current knowledge, wisdom, skills, convictions, insights, what would be the first thing you would be sure to implement in this homeschooling journey or change in your homeschooling journey? Um, planning. Planning. It took me a while to get into planning, um, but planning, certainly. I, I was an artist <laughs> my whole upbringing. So um, in the, when you're creative, you rebel against structure. <laughs> and I would have become structured sooner before I had three children. So I kind of got structured at, at baby number two. I would have been more structured at number one or when it was just me so that it would have been able to flow a lot smoother. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? What does that look like when you say structure? Because you sound like at first that you, you know, you have a kind of set flow of your day. What do you mm -hmm. unpack the structure? What do you mean by that? Yes. Having a um, having an order to my day. Okay. I didn't when I was er early in motherhood and early in homeschooling, um, I would just go with the flow, whatever the day brought. No, 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 no. You got to plan your day. Um, so having a planner for some people that is, you know, just a digital calendar in your phone and for others, it's a, a planner. I have a planner. I need pen and paper, like texts and messages. And it just overwhelms me at some, and I'm like, give me pen and paper. Mm -hmm. Um, so having that and actually sitting out, I have one day to plan every week where I just sit plan out my meals um, for the week. I think that's a huge one because so much of your time is wasted. Like, what are we going to eat today? What are we going <laughs> to eat for lunch? What are we going to eat for dinner? <laughs> like, especially when they're home all the time. They don't have school lunch to lean on. So um, making sure that I have those things set in place. So like I said in the beginning, when it's time for me to relax, I can relax. Yeah. When it's, and I would have relaxed a lot sooner as well. I would have... Um, giving myself grace a lot sooner to sit down sometimes so gotcha yeah gotcha beautiful beautiful thank you yaya excellent excellent listen 
As we end and wrap up our show here, any last words of advice or encouragement? I mean, you're a coach, so you probably always got something to say, but any last words of advice or encouragement you want to give to our girlfriends who may be even, you know, considering homeschooling or who are homeschooling? That's number one. Number two, uh, what do you have your hands involved in? I mean, share about your business or whatever that you would like to let the girlfriends know about. You know, you're an extended village now for us in New Orleans, <laughs> what we can get connected yes. with. And then three, if they want to continue this conversation with you or ask you more questions or pick your brain or find out more about your coaching, about femininity, how can they get in contact with you, Yaya? Okay. Um, any words of advice, I would say go for it. Just go for it. Go for it. Try it. You will surprise yourself. Um, and lean on God. You'll be good. Um what was the second one? <laughs> <laughs> what do you have your hands involved in, you know, as far as your... Uh, oh, I thought that was the last one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, oh, okay. The second thing, well, I have a lot going on right now. I have a collaborative book about being a woman and being an entrepreneur, which is coming out with a, another group of sisters. Um, I am, of course, in the second year of Feminine Success School, which is great going great if you would like to enroll definitely hit me up you can go to bit.ly bit.ly forward slash queen up 20 um and there you can schedule a 20 minute conversation with me if you are ready to step into that next level um and feminine success school is by interview only so we'll be able to see if it's a good fit for you there um, also the success circle, which is relationship mentorship. It's for that woman that's, that has it all and can't figure it out with love. And I would love to support you in that, um, and really attracting and preparing for what you're praying for. And then if you would like to stay connected with me, you can find me on Instagram. Um, that's where I'm most active. I'll say, <laughs> um, at feminine success is my handle at feminine success is my handle on Instagram. And I also have a free Facebook group called the queen tribe, which, um, I'm sure you will love. So go ahead and join that as well. Beautiful. Beautiful. Woo. Very good. Thank you. Yaya. Yeah, yeah. Listen, You're our welcome. friends, you are the average of the five people you hang out with. And for this last hour, you have been hanging out with Yaya Smith out of New Orleans, Louisiana. So listen, you all can keep up the momentum and continue to connect with positive people who are going to make a positive impact in your life. Just like Yaya said earlier, you know, surround yourself with those who are going to pour into you good stuff, positive, and root you on and encourage you onward, you know? And then also, you be that positive influence that others can draw from. It's a reciprocation of receiving and giving, receiving and giving. So be positive and also connect with other positive people. So y'all, y'all, girlfriends, it's got to homeschooling. So appreciate you. And thank you so much for taking time out of your busy of life. We didn't know <laughs> Me, you know, right in the thick of when it's time for this interview. But thank you so much for giving of your wisdom, your nuggets, your insights, uh, and just sharing transparently with these girlfriends. So thank you so much. May the Lord bless all that thank you're doing. You. And um, may your dream come true for that 180 acres, girlfriend. <laughs> That's a lot of land. <laughs> it is. But, uh, <laughs> thank you so much and so appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Much. Thank you for the opportunity. Y'all have a good one. Yes, yes. Listen, girlfriends. Remember that to touch, to teach a child is to touch a life. And as we homeschool, we not only touch a life, we shape the future through our efforts of homeschooling. So keep making a positive impact day after day, year after year, and pour on a lot of grace. Just like Yaya said, a lot of grace, self-care, and delegate for help, you know, do all those things that she said. Those were wise, wise pieces of nuggets, okay? All right, girlfriends. So you can find us over on Facebook at Girlfriends' is Guide to Homeschooling. That's an S and then apostrophe on YouTube, Girlfriends' is Guide to Homeschooling. And then also uh, you can find us on Tumblr. Look at GG2H with Angela Jordan Perry. And then podcasts. We're on all podcasts, yes. Woo! 
Yes. So I tune all over you. Find our podcast there where I do girlfriends chat. I'm talking with a girlfriend um, on a very small focused uh, conversation. So look for us wherever you are on um, for your iPod, your podcast. Okay. So other than that, thank you for joining us. We have another interview uh, coming up this week. We have them on Mondays at 11, Wednesdays at 6, and Fridays at 2. All of that is Eastern Standard Time, okay? So until next time, thank you so much, and you all have a wonderful, wonderful day and a great week. All the best to you, Miss Yaya. You unpacked, girl. Ah, strength to you, all right? I got it. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.